Order number eight, motion. Consideration of the public private public finance management national drought emergency fund regulations 2021. Chairperson, Committee on Delegated Legislation. Robo Kamket. Uh, Why have you taken off your mask, Honorable Kamket? And uh, I don't think you're, you have an excuse of uh, spectacles. You don't have any. I, I can't breathe properly. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> Please put on your mask. Honorable Speaker, I beg to move that this House adopts the report of the Committee on Delegated Legislation on its consideration of the Public Finance Management National Drought Emergency Fund Regulations 2021, Legal Notice Number 27 of 2021, laid on the table of the House on Thursday, 23rd March 2021. Uh, Madam Speaker, The main purpose of this regulation, Mr. Honorable Speaker, is to establish a national drought emergency fund. And, uh, Madam Speaker, the purpose of the fund is to improve the effectiveness and efficiency of the drought risk management symptoms in the country. Furthermore, the fund is to fa meant to facilitate resilience, building preparedness, and timely response to drought during different stages in order to reduce and minimize the negative effects of drought. Furthermore, uh, Madam Speaker, it is also to receive financial resources from different partners who support government on drought risk management interventions and to provide for a common basket emergency fund in order to facilitate faster, transparent, predictable, and accountable release of funds for drought risk management. Madam Speaker, uh, a quick over overview of the regulations um, these regulations, uh, Madam Speaker, establishes um, uh, an oversight board. There is going to be the, the board of the National Drought Management Authority, which, which shall be established. There is going to be a secretariat of the fund. Uh, furthermore, Order the, members. There is Order. a National Drought and Food Security Order. Steering Committee. I can see the Honorable Member for Kuala, and uh, I'm not quite sure who the other one is. Please, uh, you need to consult in an acceptable manner. Don't shout across at each other. Go on, Honorable Kamkesh. Yes, yes, Honorable Speaker. And there is also the Intergovernmental Technical Committee on Drought and Food Security. There is also established a County Drought Committee. Uh, which will be based at the county, made up of various officers of the county government. The regulations, Madam Speaker, further, further um, provide for an oversight, oversight by Parliament through annual reporting to the Auditor General and quarterly reporting on projects financed by the fund. Madam Speaker, on scrutiny of the instrument, the, co the, the committee found, found out, Madam Speaker, that um, the regulatory making authority was within the law in terms of the Constitution of Kenya, the Interpretations of the General Prov uh, Provisions Act, the Public Finance uh, Act, the Drought, National Drought Management Authority Act, as well as the Statutory Instruments Act of 2013. Madam, Madam Speaker,
on the matter of public participation. The committee, during its consultations with the regulatory mapping authority, which is a national treasury jointly with the Minister of Revolution and Assals, uh, established that ex extensive consultations were undertaken during the preparations, uh, preparation of these regulations. Various uh, key stakeholders, including the county governments, line ministries, development partners, among others, were consulted and their input taken into account before finalization of the regulations. Uh, Madam Speaker, pursuant therefore to standing order number 210 and having examined the public finance management route, uh, management emergency fund regulations and in, accord in accordance with the Constitution of Kenya and all the relevant uh, acts of parliament, this committee recommends that this house approves the said statutory instruments in accordance with section 24.2a of the PFM Act. Madam Speaker, before I, I conclude, let me just mention that this is a very important fund that, that, that these uh, regulations establish, and I'm sure honorable members, especially those who come from uh, drought-prone areas, will be very ready and willing to, to, to support the establishment of this uh, fund. Madam Speaker, the seed money for this fund is Kenya shillings uh, 2 billion annually. And we have indications, Madam Speaker, from our consultations that several donor agencies are interested in um, topping up what the government uh, will provide as seed money. So in terms of, therefore, uh, covering the gaps that are left by uh, national government as well as county governments, this is a very important fund in terms of helping various uh, 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 sections of, of Kenyans, uh, uh, the farmers, uh, livestock uh, farmers like myself, to recover from uh, the effects of drought. So without saying too, too many words, I beg to move and ask the Honorable to second. Who is? He's a member of the committee. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker, for giving me this chance to second uh, this important uh, motion. Uh, and from the onset, I have to say that the committee met the relevant government agencies. The regulations were well explained to us. And unanimously, we agreed to have them uh, approved. The chair has said it all. Safe to add that this is not a new thing, uh, Madam Speaker, because this fund had already been established under Section 18 of the National Drought Management Authority Act of 2016, uh, but and under uh, seed amount of two billion uh, set aside. However, it was later discovered that all the funds should be created under PFF, PFM Act, and which necessitated the, the amendment of the National Drought Management Authority Act by, in 2020 to enable this regulation to be done under the PFM Act. Uh, so as in essence, uh, this parliament had already uh, passed uh, the main act uh, so uh, these regulations are pursuant to the amendment of the Parent Act, and now they are, they are brought under the, the, proper, the proper Act of Parliament. Madam Speaker, the issue of uh, drought is, is, a matter of, is a matter which uh, this country lives with. We know time in, time out, Occasionally, and sometimes even not far between, there is always drought in this country, and it, it, it will always be there. And basically, it is to create a fund which, when national drought come, uh, come up, will be a fund which can deal 
with this uh, calamity to prevent uh, the, the suffering or to ameliorate uh, the suffering which the drought visit on, the, uh, on our citizens and our countries. And uh, these regulations, they have set two layers at the national level and also at the county level. Where at the national level, the committee is supposed to be chaired or led by the deputy president and deputized by the chairperson of the Council of Governors. And at county level, it is chaired by the governor and deputized by the commissioner. So that there will be seamless way of dealing with droughts uh, in future. And uh, it is a high time. In fact, these regulations uh, have come at the right time so that uh, we think or we, we, we put measures, they, they, they put measures to ensure that in future the uh, management of droughts will be better coordinated and uh, the side effects, the worst side effects of, the, of droughts will be able to be arrested uh, in time. Uh, Madam Speaker, basically the committee was supposed to ensure that there was public part part participation and the committee was satisfied that that public participation was done before these regulations were put in place and also there was an issue of uh, the, 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 the regulatory impact uh, assessment which uh, uh, we felt or, or, or we concluded it was, necessary in this, it was not necessary in this matter because there will be no cost on the community uh, by these regulations coming into force or being approved by this house. We also established that the, the statutory timelines were met by the, the body making the regulations and tempering them in the, 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 the right time. And as we considered all that, we recommended, as the chairman has said, to have these regulations approved. And I urge this house to uh, go with the report of the committee. These regulations, we needed them. This fund, we needed as a country, uh, as we know, almost 70% of our country is actually, uh, is actually arid, and, uh, and we normally have those issues of drought uh, in quite a number of our part of the country. So with these regulations, we hope, uh, and proper management, we hope that uh, the fund, once established and once kicking, this country will be uh, in a better place to meet its, uh, this kind of uh, 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 calamities or this kind of uh, incidents when they, are, when, they, when they occur in the future. With those seminal remarks, Madam Speaker, I beg to second. Order, members. Order. And you consider yourself chairman emeritus and, and you want us to flout the standing orders? I, I have not even proposed the question. Order members. Honorable members, I go on to propose a question, which is that this House adopts a report of the Committee on Delegated Legislation on its consideration of the Public Finance Management National Drought Emergency Fund Regulations 2021 laid on the table of the House on Thursday, May 13, 2021, and pursuant to the provisions of Section 24, Subsection 4 of the Public Finance Management Act 2012, approves the Public Finance Management uh, National Drought Emergency Fund Regulations 2021, published as Legal Notice Number 27 of 2021. Is, is it the, the acceptance of members that I put the question? Yes. Okay. I, I go on to put the question, which is that this House adopts a report of the Committee on Delegation Legis Delegated Legislation on its consideration of the Public Finance Management National Drought Emergency Fund Regulations 2021, laid on the table of the House on Thursday, May 13, 2021, and pursuant to the provisions of Section 24, Subsection 4 of the Public Finance Management Act 2012, approves the Public Finance Management National Drought Emergency Fund Regulations 2021,
published as legal notice number 27 of 2021. Will as many as of that opinion say aye? aye. Will as many as of a contrary opinion say nay? The ayes have it. Next order. <coughs> order number nine, motion. Consideration of exemption from income tax for airlines with the government of Kenya shareholding of at least 45% and its subsidiaries. Chairperson, delegated legislation. Order, order, honorable Ishungo. You're becoming rowdy. Order. Honorable Speaker, I, I do not know why the member for Gikuyu is so excited this afternoon. Uh, <laughs> Madam Speaker, I beg to move that uh, this House adopts the report of the Committee on Delegated Legislation on its consideration of the exemption from income tax Uh, exemption from income tax uh, an airline in which the government of Kenya owns at least 45% of its shares and subsidiaries of that airline. Legal notice number 27 of 2021. Uh, Madam Speaker, the object and purpose of the exemption before us uh, is to exempt an airline, including its subsidiaries, where the government owns at least 45% of its shares from minimum tax imposed under Section 12B of the Income Tax Act. It's legal notice, uh, Madam Speaker, seeks to exempt from the income tax accrued from an, uh, uh, derived from an accrued or derived from an accrued in Kenya from uh, the provisions of Section 12 of D of the Income Tax Act Cap 70, which introduces minimum tax payable by all entities, regardless of whether they are in a profit-making position or not. Uh, Madam Speaker, the Kenya Airways Limited requested to be exempted from paying minimum tax uh, citing the following grounds. Number one, the COVID-19 pandemic affected the operations of the airline, uh, of, of airlines worldwide, and therefore worsened the financial position of the already ailing um, airline, which has been making losses in the recent past. Number two, considering its financial operations, the minimum tax will render the company's operations unsustainable. Number three, the airline con continued to pay lease expenses even during suspension of all international operations occasioned by the COVID-19 pandemic. The Kenya Airways is limited as a national carrier, Madam Speaker, plays a pivotal role in the economy through marketing Kenya as a tourism destination, trade facilitation, job creation, among others. Madam Speaker, it is therefore considered prudent to grant exemption from the from minimum tax to help the company continue its operations until it returns to profitability. Some of the subsidiaries of the Kenya Airways uh, Kenya uh, Air Freight Handling Limited, Jumbo Jet Limited, Africa Cargo Handling Limited, Ken Cargo Airlines International Limited, Fahari Aviation Limited, or Pride Oil Limited. Mr. Speaker, sir, M Madam Speaker, sorry, some of the measures, some of the, in terms of uh, helping this airline stay afloat, the government has taken other measures. Um, including the following. 
In negotiations with the other airlines uh, internationally, Senegal has announced uh, $128 million relief in, for the tourism, tourism and air transport sector. The government of Seychelles has waived all landing and parking fees from April to December 2020. The government of Cote d'Ivoire waived its tourism tax for transport passengers. Lufthansa agreed to a $9 billion bailout with the German government. South Africa is deferring payroll, income, and carbon taxes across all industries, as well as uh, Tanzania Civil Aviation Authority has promos, proposed measures uh, to help, uh, including postmo, postponement without penalties of payments related to charges, cessation of arrangements of increasing charges to operators, among many others. Madam Speaker, on scrutiny of the instrument, the committee the committee examined the exemption from tax act, uh, uh, an airline in which the government of Kenya owns 45%, and in accordance with the Constitution of Kenya, the Interpretation of General Provisions Act, and the Territory Instruments Act, and uh, it found that everything, all these pieces of legislation uh, were followed. Madam Speaker, As a matter of observations, Madam Speaker, on the, on the matter of public participation, the committee observed that the National Treasury and Planning submitted before the committee and that after the enactment of the Finance Act 2020, introduced minimum tax, and National Treasury received various presentations from, from stakeholders on the impact of the new tax on several classes of businesses, including public entities that are facing challenges. Madam Speaker, in the process of handling this uh, matter, Madam Speaker, the committee was uh, seized of constitutional petitions that were uh, ongoing in other jurisdictions. For instance, there is a, 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 a constitutional petition by number 001 of 2021 and 005 filed in the High Court of Kenya in Machakos. There is another petition, uh, number 079 of 2021, by Kenya Association of Manufacturers, the Retail Trade Association of Kenya, and Kenya Flower. Council. Madam Speaker, the National Assembly, the Commissioner General of, uh, of Kenya Revenue Authority and the Attorney General are joined in both petitions as respondents. However, Madam Speaker, on receipt, uh, uh, the committee received legal opinions from the Directorate of Legal Services and National, uh, of the National Assembly and the Directorate of Litigation and compliance services on the effect of considering a matter in view, in view of the court cases under standing order number 89 on the matter of subjudice. Mr. S Madam Speaker, sir, Madam Speaker, <laughs> Madam Speaker, the committee, after listening to counsel from our own internal lawyers, decided to proceed with the matter, given, Madam Speaker, that there was no injunction to the National Assembly. And therefore, Madam Speaker, pursuant to standing order number 2104, and having examined the legal notice number 15 of 2021, in line with the Constitution, the Interpretations and General Provisions Act, the Income Tax Act, the Statutory Instruments Act, the committee recommends that this House approves the, sta the said statutory instrument in accordance with Section 62 of the Income Tax Act, Cap 470. Madam Speaker, I beg to move and ask the Honorable Murugara to second, who is a member of the committee. Honorable Murugara. <clears throat> thank you, thank you, Madam Speaker.
Honorable members, uh, some of you are consulting in very, very high tones. <laughs> Consult in low tones, honorable members. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'm sure they will. Madam Speaker, allow me to second the motion and adopt <clears throat> the explanation given by the chairperson of the Committee on Delegated Legislation and especially as regards why the committee dealt with the matter when actually there was an indication that there were petitions pending in court. We were satisfied, Madam Chair, that, uh, Madam Speaker, that the injunctions that are pending, sorry, the petitions that are pending in court do not touch on the National Assembly and therefore we could actually deal with the matter without breaching the sub judice rule. Reasons were actually given as to why this exemption was sought by KQ. And we also uh, considered the rationale of acceding to the request by the ministry and the government by putting out this notice. First and foremost, we are actually not oblivious of the fact that KQ uh, <clears throat> plays a strategic role and purpose in operations of the government, including uh, aviation industry and security and trade. We also took into consideration the fact that if the exemption is granted, we would actually be sustaining KQ, which in essence is not doing very well and requires jolts and measures to ensure that it does perform uh, especially as the national carrier. We consider the reasons that were given for the application, including the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic and the fact that this minimum tax would actually uh, render the company's operations unsustainable because of its income, which is not very high. There were other reasons that were given and also to consider that under KQ there are various subsidiaries which be would benefit from the exemption that is being sought. We then also looked at what is happening elsewhere in the, in, on, uh, in, the in the globe, elsewhere in the world, where such exemptions are sought and given. And we found Ethiopia, South Africa, and other uh, countries in Africa and in Europe actually considering to extend this particular uh, waiver to their national carriers with a view to ensuring that they are competitive on the global market and the country or the countries do benefit from that waiver. Uh, having considered this and especially the proper section of the income tax that empowers the minister to issue such a notice and the failing to find any impediment to the fact that this committee would approve the statutory instrument, we had no reasons not to approve, and therefore we approved. Hence, our report and our request this afternoon that this House does consider the report and extend the consideration uh, to KQ as sought. I therefore beg to second. Other members? Honorable Musimba? Order. Order members. Is it that uh, members are just uh, still in the in the recess mode? Members, you are not paying attention. Order. Um, honorable members, I go on to propose a question, which is that this House adopts a report of the Committee on Delegated Legislation on its consideration of legal notice number 27 of 2021 on the exemption from income tax for airlines with government of Kenya shareholding of at least 45% and its subsidiaries. Laid on the table of the House on Thursday, May 13, 2021, and pursuant to the provisions of section 13, subsection 2 of the Income Tax Act, approves legal notice number 27 of 2021 on exemption from income tax for airlines with government of Kenya shareholding of at least 45% and its subsidiaries. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
Honorable Mili, what, what is out of order? Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker, for giving me the opportunity. Madam Speaker, to enable us to uh, undertake our legislative oversight and representation roles effectively, I would wish to request uh, to be guided on whether when we go to the next order, which is Committee of the Whole House, whether we are going to be dealing with the Kenya National Library Services Bill, Madam Speaker, with your kind indulgence, because there was a, a decision earlier, by a communication earlier uh, in the morning by the Speaker, and I uh, would like to know whether the position has since changed, whether we are dealing with it and the one on drugs uh, Honorable Madam Mili, Speaker. Honorable Mili, uh, just be patient. You are anticipating debate, and you know that. Just relax and. Uh... Yes, Honorable Mili? Madam Speaker, uh, if you could kindly, what I'm actually asking is I'm not talking about the substance of the debate. Madam Speaker, we do legislative representation and oversight roles. I have amendments to that bill. Madam Speaker, it would actually not be kind for especially somebody like me who's always in the House, and if I have something else to do, to sit here when that one of those things is not coming. Honorable just out of courtesy, if we, it would be kind. I just didn't want to make it that obvious. But it would be kind if the House would let us know whether indeed uh, the bill that I have amendments to is actually coming. It's listed, but I'm not sure it's coming. Based what, on what, it's online, it's there. It's there online. Honorable Mili, we are on order number nine, uh, which is what uh, we are getting into. Once we get to order number 10, your question will be answered. Actually, immediately after order number nine. So just relax. Uh, Honorable Yusuf. Yeah, uh, Madam uh, Chair, I just wanted to bring to your attention whether this House has the quorum to continue this important discussion. Honourable Yusuf, Honourable Yusuf, we have uh, several members. We, we are properly constituted. We have several members out in the tents and uh, so let us go on let us start with the honorable barasa mutua member for kimilili thank you madam chair for giving me this opportunity to to contribute to this very important motion and from the very honest uh, on, uh, onset madam chair I want to regret that the Honorable Chair of uh, Delegated Legislation he has not convinced me to support this motion. I say so because I'm aware that Kenya Airways gets a lot of money from, from the government, Madam Chair. Kenya Airways is not even audited by the Auditor General. He has not told us whether if we exempt them from paying taxes, Kenyans are going to pay less amount of money in the name of tickets, Madam Chair. We have uh, continued to support Kenya Airways, but Kenya Airways seem not to be doing very well. If they cannot do very well, let them wind up, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, this house, this house is a, we are people's watchmen. We are not the government's watchmen, Madam, Madam, Madam Chair. And we must we must continue, Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker to Didmas, ensure. Honorable Didmas, we are in a full plenary. We are not in the committee of the whole house. So you are addressing the speaker. Thank you, Madam Speaker, for that uh, direction. I'm guided. And what I was saying is that uh, this house, we are supposed to protect the interest of the Kenyan people and not the interest of uh, government, uh, Madam uh, Speaker. Madam Speaker, I say so because as a people, uh, we represent Kenyans. And we must ensure that our contribution in the name of uh, passing motions and bills and the reports is to assist government deliver better services to the Kenyans, Madam, Madam Speaker. 
I am opposing this, uh, this uh, motion because uh, we cannot be giving uh, Kenya Airways money every year. And because of management or one reason or the other, they are unable to get back to profitability. I see uh, very many ills being committed uh, to Kenyans by this government, but it's being assisted by, our, by this house itself, ma 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 Madam Speaker. I've seen, uh, you saw what happened yesterday, where police enters a telling center and begins to beat up people and everybody. You've seen uh, last two weeks, the governor of Bungoma pronounced himself that he has fairer blood, fairer, Madam, che Madam Speaker, is, uh, it was a group that was in Bungoma that was similar to Mungiki. And these people are still moving around, uh, ma, 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 Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, if this House will continue ticking boxes for government, if this House will continue aiding government to commit more ills to the Kenyans, I would rather resign than be part of a group of people in this House that are simply processing what the government brings here without being guided by the interest of Kenyans, uh, Madam Speaker, I want to make it very clear and urge members of this House that we must oppose this motion because this motion is brought here not in the interest of Kenyans but in the interest of a few business people who are part of uh, the state machinery that are capturing this, the economies of this country, Madam, Madam, Madam Speaker. So, Madam Speaker, I oppose this motion. The Honourable Leader of Majority. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. Honourable Speaker, I rise to support uh, uh, this motion and uh, because uh, it's important that we understand and appreciate what this motion is all about. Sometimes uh, earlier this year, and I believe uh, from the beginning of this year, this House passed a law that said every business will have to pay 1% of, as, of its gross turnover as tax, whether you're making a profit or not. Now, I know that matter is been suspended by the courts, but uh, that does not stop us from doing our work here. And the rationale of that was there are people who are constantly claiming losses to avoid paying tax. Now, that could apply for us here as individuals, private citizens. But the government cannot cheat itself on its tax. No government entity can avoid declaring a profit to avoid taxation because the government is a shareholder. The government knows whether you made a profit or not. So the government cannot manipulate its tax books on itself, against itself. Private individuals could do it as a way of evading uh, taxes. And if you look at Kenya Airways, it's 48% owned by the Kenyan government in shareholding. If you add the guarantees to the other loans, then you actually, there's no doubt, Kenya Airways is actually owned by the Kenyan government. Kenya Airways has been making losses. It may have turnover in the billions, but when you look at the losses it's making, if you're going to ask it to pay 1% of its turnover as a minimum tax, you're actually taking it into a deeper loss situation, and you're asking Treasury to pay KRA on behalf of Kenya Airways, the taxation, then KRA takes it to Treasury, and then Treasury gives it, but it's, it's, it's more of left hand, the left pocket paying the right pocket. It's, it's a zero-sum game. So given that kind of situation, uh, I think the calculation has been done because of the very nature of this business. And looking at the history with which Kenya is, and the committee has really done through all that, A, the entire airline industry is in shambles globally, even before COVID. Post-COVID, uh, if you look at locally, South Africa Airlines, 
for those of you, it was a global leader in Africa, was the leader in Africa. Right now, uh, from the information I have, South Africa Airways is operating on only eight aircrafts. They have surrendered all the others to the lessors and said, we want to minimize our losses. They went into administration, which is basically receivership, and surrendered all the aircraft and limited their routes. Kenya Airways could well have done the same, and perhaps may end up doing the same at some point. Uh, if you look at uh, Lufthansa, the Germany, they've had to be built on a 9 billion euro bailout. The uh, Emirates uh, made a loss of 15 billion uh, dollars uh, last year. So every airline has made losses. And to expect Kenya Airways with its losses to then pay 1% of its global turnover as minimum tax is actually killing it, or basically passing a law that is not enforceable. So it's on that basis that Treasury then looked and said, is there some way we could avoid killing Kenya Airways, which is a national carrier, which is what is supporting the farmers out there? Do you have five minutes or more? So, sorry. Which is supporting the farmers? Five minutes, son of a Which is supporting the farmers in terms of ferrying their goods, all this uh, ferrying in the future. Wind up in a minute. Uh, Thank you. Majority. Kenya Airways is a critical actor in this country supporting the economy. You kill Kenya Airways, you kill all the economy that is supported through transportation, be it tourism, be it agriculture, be it horticulture. And hence, this is a measure to shield it, and even from uh, litigation, that they are not paying taxes and they are supposed to be doing it. So basically, I think it's a straightforward thing that whatever you do, uh, you'll be asking the same government to pay on behalf of their uh, company where they are the majority shareholder. Uh, with those uh, few remarks, I beg to support and ask members, we support this thing, we don't need to debate much of it. It's a different debate from the ownership structure. This is about minimum tax and salvaging that kind of situation. Honorable Pasaris Rosanna. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, uh, taking off from where uh, the majority leader has ended, uh, we have to first of all remember that Kenya Airways is our pride. It has a lot of challenges, we know that. Uh, over the years, we have bailed Kenya Airways out, not once, many times, and we'll probably continue to do so because we're just coming out of a pandemic, or still in a pandemic, and airlines have been hit very hard. I was actually very proud of our national carrier during the period that uh, we had the pandemic because they turned their passenger flights into cargo flights and actually helped quite a number of our farmers be able to get their produce across to their clients. So that was something that not, uh, not many countries did, not many national airlines did that. We know that uh, operating a national airline uh, might not be easy. And we know that we've seen even takeovers uh, in terms of KLM uh, being bought by other countries as well because of the cost at which you run an airline uh, and the kind of customers that you have. And in our region, uh, because Kenya Airways set the pace in terms of a national airline, we've seen other airlines come up like Rwanda Air. And that actually posed competition for our airline. But we know that if we put the right structures in place, and we give them assistance. You know, when you have a child that is not doing well, you don't say, let's, let's do away with the educating this child. Let's do away with uh, investing in this child. What do we do? We come together and we look at how best can we help this child excel. And I believe that we need to do that when it comes to Kenya Airways. We need to embrace the airline and see as government, what can we do to ensure that this pride of Africa that we call Kenya Airways, that connects Africa and connects Africa to the world, that is of essence, it's not just about our country. When we don't support Kenya Airways, we're not supporting the bigger continent of Africa because the entire continent of Africa depends on Kenya Airways for connectivity. So as a country, I think sometimes we have to stop politicizing everything and we have to call a spade a spade. Kenya Airways has had some struggles. 
There has been corruption, and we ask the various bodies and structures that we've put in this country that deal with corruption to make sure that as government invests in this airline and gives concessions to this airline, that we are not losing this money through corruption. But to say that because there has been corruption and because it's been bailed out, we should actually back off from Kenya Airways would be the wrong way to go. Because without connectivity, no country can develop. And for me, Kenya Airways has had its challenges, but as a country, we have to understand that without this airline, we're not going to do very well. And I also want to talk to the board of Kenya Airways and the management of Kenya Airways. At the end of the day, you're running an airline and you've got competition. So you have to also style up and ensure that you have the prices that are right and the service that is right. Because I have also seen that right now Air France is offering t uh, tickets at a very, at a thousand dollars to go to Europe. Kenya Airways also goes to Paris. But at the end of the day, if they're not going to try and be competitive, then they're also going to lose market. And then we will be actually bailing out an airline at a point at which where they are not competitive. So they have to also work hard to ensure that they're competitive, that their service is up to key, and to understand that government Government cannot eradicate competition for the airline. Government can give them the cushion that they need, but they also have to step up and ensure that they guard the public resources. There was a time that one had pride when Kenya Airways was trading in the stock exchange for 124 shillings. And now look at the price. It is, it's, it is, it is a shame. So whatever we have done wrong over the years to bring this airline down to its knees, Right? Let the anti-corruption go for all those people that actually brought this airline down. Because at the end of the day, it is the national pride of this country. It is our connection to not only our continent, but the rest of the world. And Africa can always excel. And I believe that there are management that we can also have within our own country that can bring Kenya Airways forward. In other countries, we've got Kenyans that are managing big institutions and doing well. Every time we're looking to bail out Kenya Airways, we're looking for foreigners. Let's also look for the good brains that we have in this country to ensure that this airline can stand up and excel and live beyond us and be our legacy as leaders. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Member for Kikuyu. Thank you, Honorable Speaker, for this opportunity. Honorable Speaker, let me just begin by saying, one, that I support this uh, uh, delegated legislation report to exempt KQ. And uh, I must apologize to the people of KQ and Kenyans at large, Honorable Speaker, because I came in a little bit late this morning, and there was a rush to pass the earlier uh, delegated uh, legislation report on exempting Japanese uh, companies, consultants, and etc. And Honorable Speaker, it may be very bad pointer to Kenyans that uh, we are now moving towards a regime of no, tax Mr. exemption, Honorable, Honorable Speaker. Out of order? Yes, uh, Chair, could um, the Honorable Member for Kikuyu please expand or explain that I think he insinuated that there was a rush to pass the regulations on exempting Japanese companies from income tax. Could you expound what you meant, that, that it was contrived or planned? You, you are a member of the committee, right? Yes. Okay. Honorable Lishungo, clarify that. Honorable Speaker, you know I'm not uh, in the habit of clarifying things for people who are late uh, to, be, though she was not even here in the morning. Therefore, if uh, she was seated here in the morning, Honorable Speaker, she would have known uh, that indeed there was a rush, and I'm explaining, Honorable Speaker. The Honorable Member has said, I was not even here in the morning. I was here from the beginning of the session. I have sat here all morning. So just uh, clarify for Honorable Shamala. She was there and she has asked... Uh, well, the, the time she came, she, she knows what happened in the morning. And indeed, uh, Honorable Speaker, just like we have done with the earlier business, um, the, the one we just transacted before this, that is exactly what happened in the morning. And I was saying it is my regret and my apology to the people of Kikuyu and Kenyans at large because I walked into the chamber late, and by that time, we had exempted Japanese companies, Japanese consultants, from paying taxation, Honorable Speaker. And I was saying, with that, I support, Honorable Speaker, the move to exempt from the minimum tax. And I wonder, because I've had the member for Kimi Lili, the Honorable Dinmas, uh, rise on this matter, and I th think I want to agree with the leader of majority on the question of delinking what we intend to do with this uh, delegated legislation and the ownership structure of Kenya Airways. 
I want to uh, uh, beg that those who are of the view, like Honorable Didmas, that it is indeed uh, some of us who rose in, on this floor when we were passing this legislation for minimum tax to oppose the question of minimum tax. Because you can never tax a business based on its turnover. You tax the profit and the returns that businesses make, not the money they make. If you take the case example of Kenya Airways, and not Kenya Airways, any airline, honorable speaker, and maybe we should even be thinking of how we extend this to beyond Kenya Airways to other airlines and other businesses, and I, I am happy, honorable speaker, that the courts came to save Kenyans from this minimum tax, and I pray that even the matter in court will be resolved in favor of the people of Kenya, because as legislatures, honorable speaker, I think we did, we did fail the people of Kenya in not protecting the honorable speaker. The airline industry, honorable speaker, has so many levies and taxes that are loaded on the, to their ticket sales. And therefore, when you tax minimum tax on a ticket sale, you're actually taxing a tax on tax. And this airline's honorable speaker, as many other members have said, with the collapse of the aviation industry due to COVID, the COVID pandemic, honorable speaker, many pundits have, are now estimating that it will probably take uh, airlines across the world, not just Kenya Airways, a minimum of two to three years to be able to recover. Therefore, honorable speaker, I want to say that I want to support this on the basis that this airline also has a ripple effect on other sectors of the economy, talk of tourism, talk of even our taxi businesses, talk of hotels with the number and the effect it has on the tourism sector in terms of the passengers that they are bringing to this country. And therefore, we must be able to be in a position to secure at least our national airline and our pride. But also, Honorable Speaker, to mention that this must not be seen and must not be used by those who intended to use Kenya Airways to capture, to use state capture, to capture the business of K KAA, that this must not be that another avenue now, Honorable Speaker. Lastly, Honorable Speaker, we must ensure that if we are exempting this corporation from taxes, Honorable Speaker, this corporation must also subject itself to the audit by the... Honorable uh, Dr. Makali Mulu. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Uh, for this opportunity. Honorable Speaker, I've listened to the mover and I've listened to the majority leader. And I want to join them in supporting this, uh, this uh, request to exempt Kenya Airways from the 1% turnover tax. Honorable Speaker, I think we are all in agreement that uh, Kenya is a strategic uh, investment for this country. Kenya always is the pride of Africa and the pride of Kenya. But Honorable Speaker, I think I need to make the following observations. I think as a country, Honorable Speaker, because we are using taxpayers' money, we have built this airline for so many times that any time they do their business and they make losses, it is the taxpayer who comes and raises resources through taxation, which we pump into Kenya Airways. Unfortunately, Honorable Speaker, the more we pump these resources to Kenya Airways, the more they incur more losses. And to me, the most important question is, for how long are we going to continue pumping more resources to Kenya Airways as a country because to me, that is using good money to chase bad money. And at the end of the day, I always believe the kind of billions you are packing to Kenya Airways, if they were pumped to other development initiatives, Kenyans will benefit more. So I think even as a house, as we support this exemption, honorable speaker, I think we need, we need to start asking the hard questions. The government is so keen to talk about shareholding in Kenya Airways. They are so keen to talk about taxing themselves if they were to take this tax. But Honorable Speaker, from my own assessment and my own opinion, there has been very minimal effort being made by the government to penetrate the management of the Kenya Airways. And I think that's where the problem is. How come we pump so much resources, but do very little to ensure that we, we are controlling the management of the airline? 
because unless the management of Kenya House is also been kind of uh, the government is taking the same kind of interest in their management as they are taking pumping resources, then Honorable Speaker can say without any fear of contradiction that we continue just using taxpayers' money to pump to Kenya House, year in, year out. And I believe this money could help other Kenyans who are saying they have no water, like where I come from. They could be able to get water. The same rules could be used to do other important national initiatives. So even as we support this honorable speaker, I think time has come when then we must start asking the government the hard questions and make sure that the more money we give to the Kenya with through parliament, the more they also become more careful to, to start making profits. For now it's understandable because of COVID-19, oil and eggs are not doing well. But I think Kenya always has not just been doing badly this year. They have been doing badly over the years. And the question is, for how long do we continue doing this? So let's support, but I think, honorable members, it is our work as parliamentarians, as representatives of people, to make sure that the taxpayers' money is used effectively and efficiently. With those remarks, honorable speaker, I support. Member for Imenti Central, Honorable Kerema. Madam Speaker, I, I stand here by to support this uh, motion. Only to say that uh, the Kenya Airways has not been so much beneficial to the Kenyans in this fight of pumping a lot of Kenyan money, taxpayers' money, in the state body. If you look at the Kenya Airways, it's a monopoly Airways in Kenya. It has no competitor. One wonders how a monopoly business entity making great roses each and every subsequent year without competition and still you find that it's making a lot of loss. Now, this money which taxpayers gave to the Kenya Airways now and then if it is, used, it is used to uplift the standard of the common man, the one who is suffering in the village because of lack of infrastructure, just graveling of roads, lack of water. Remember, you find that there are some places people travel kilometers and kilometers to get water because there is no money even to dig a bowl. You find that Kenyans are not happy with what we are doing as registrars or those who represent them here. Because we are, the, we, we are the people who take care. We as MPs, we are the ones who take care of the common, common man's interest. Now, instead of taking care of that common man's interest, is that we are to revive a modern bad bond which does not benefit Kenyans at all. When do we do about it? At no time, when will you go to Kenya Airways and find that it is empty? It's always full. By the way, those people who are in the Kenya Airways conduct themselves as what we don't understand. Because Ambonde, like Kenya Airways, since it is a trending body, is supposed to be making only losses when there are no customers. But since it's monopoly, it's, it's uh, applying what you call a monopoly method, it's always full. 